find those? Um, so right now, um, if you're not already a current 3D creator, there's a repository called Sketchfab online where you can download all sorts of 3D models. Um, otherwise, anything that you generate, like as simple as like a, a small Tinkercad file or SketchUp, like anything that's in 3D, you could essentially pull into a looking glass. But not a oh, 3D wow. movie. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, that sounds yeah, complicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that there must be a lot of educational uses or something. Sure, like yeah. We're starting to work with uh, Pixel Academy already in New York. Um, they're developing a class for after-school students around the age of like 7 to 16 um, in Brooklyn and um, they're teaching a 10-week program starting in September and they're doing like a fortnight world building class and so they're going to try build some worlds in Unity and pull that into a looking glass. Yeah, yeah, like I imagine like instead of dissecting a real frog for example, you could like... Dissect a virtual model. one, yeah, for sure. Um, now, you still have to look at it sort of face on. Right. Are you guys experimenting or looking into... Uh, we think that that is like an obvious next step. Um, but, you know, there it has to do a lot with the um, also advancement of a lot of other things like display screen technology and like, you know, um, so right now it's just how much does it cost per pixel. Um, and so right now we found that this, even though it's not 360, is still a good enough um, view cone for people to understand how 3D objects can live in the real world with no glasses. This is great. Thanks. Is there any extra work importing these 3D objects? Well, this Voxatron um, was done solely by Joseph White, who made Pico 8. Uh, we gave him the source file for it, source code, and he figured out how to port it without our Unity SDK. So, in short, he's basically a genius. Um, and so, it, it, it is almost no work at trying to um, port in a, a 3D object, say an OBJ file. We have a model uploader for that. But something more complex, like a game, will take some time to port in, um, just to like, you know, because if you're porting it in from a 2D screen or a, a mobile game or a VR headset, it's like you still have to work around for the environment to see how this player would play. So it's going to be a little extra legwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But totally worth it, obviously. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. How are you doing, John? This is so much fun. <laughs> All right, let me give someone else a try. <laughs>